Here's your word for the day from Calvary in Lake Havasu. Visit us on the web at calvaryaz.com. Well, good morning, Calvary. Thanks for tuning in for your word for the day today. We are looking at Colossians chapter 2, verses 11 and 12 today. And, you know, the interesting thing about church and religion is it so often uh, encourages us to find goodness in ourselves and to pursue a life uh, that is good and ethical and moral. But here's the thing. We can't do that on our own. And, and so often the tradition of religion has encouraged us to do that on our own works and, and find things that, that we can be good. And maybe it's just by comparing to others. You're better than these people over here. And sometimes it's promoting the things that we do ourselves that, that are good. And today as we look at Colossians chapter 2, we're going to see uh, the reality that in the eyes of God, the only thing that brings us goodness is Jesus and his work in our life. So I want to read uh, Colossians 2 verses 11 and 12 for us. And it says this, it says, in him, you were also circumcised with a circumcision made without hands by putting off of the body of the flesh by the circumcision of Christ, having been buried with him in baptism in which you were also raised with him through faith in the powerful working of God who raised him from the dead. Now here, Paul is speaking to the Israelites and their tradition of that external sign of righteousness and unity with God, which is circumcision. Now, he's pointing out that in Jesus now, we have negated the usefulness of that, that that is just something done as, as humans now, but there's no spiritual effect because of what we have as an option in Jesus now. And he's saying, hey, there is something so much more powerful if you surrender to Jesus. There's transformation that happens. There's life change that happens. There's unity with God that happens, not by things we do, not by external things, not by actions that we construct, but by what Jesus has done for us. And by surrendering our life to Jesus, our life can be radically changed and transformed as a result. And, and in that, it even points to the power of what baptism signifies. And in verse 13, or rather verse 12, he says, you've been buried with him in baptism in which you're also raised with him through faith in the powerful working of God who raised him from the dead. And so that is why we celebrate baptisms here at Calvary because they represent the life change and transformation that's happened by the powerful working of God in someone's life, not something they've done, not because they have made that decision to get baptized, but because they've made the decision to surrender their life to Jesus and experience the powerful working of God in their life. And now that, that symbolizes what's taken place. Their old life of, of trying to do it on their own, of, of finding goodness on their own, but really being identified by sin as being put to death as they're lowered into the water. And as we say, they're being raised to new life. There's a, there's a new creation that is in them because of what Jesus has done for them. So today, let me challenge you to, to really examine your life and ask, are you pursuing righteousness based on what you do because you serve at church, because you do this over here, because you're generous there, because you, you have this morality and this strong stance over here, or are you understanding that goodness can only be found through the powerful work of Jesus in your life? Because that's the truth. And Paul, as he continues this thought, we'll look at uh, in the next episode, really shows us that we can only find righteousness through him. Everything else is, as scripture says, just filthy rags that we're trying to, to brag about. So today, find your righteousness in Jesus alone. We'll see you next time.